Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fun video. Today we are taking a look at the new Giant Sending Love Sentiment Die, as well as the new Embroidery Hoop Flower Add-on, which works with the original Embroidery Hoop die set. So let's take a closer look at these dies. This is the Giant Sending Love, and you can see that you get this outline as well as the pieces on the inside. You can use the outline by itself or you can fill it in with those little pieces. So Rebecca is going to show us here how to do that. She's adding a little bit of adhesive on the back of that outline sentiment and putting that onto a piece of algae cardstock. And this is really nice just as it is with that algae color showing through the letters, but you can also fill them in with a contrasting color. To add those letters in contrasting colors, we can just add little dots of liquid glue inside those letters, pick up those die cut letters and drop them into the outline. This would be really fun to do in lots of different colors as well, or some glitter cardstock. And you can see just how much of a statement that big sending love makes on a card. Now let's take a look at the embroidery hoop flower add-on. This die cuts a hoop that will fit inside the original embroidery hoop frame and we can stitch this beautiful daisy design. Here are some examples that you can find on the Lawn Fawn website of different ways to stitch the daisy. We can stitch just the outlines or we can fill in the petals and I will show you both ways. So for my first flower here, I will be doing the example on the far right where we will outline the petals and then fill in the center. For this one, I have cut my embroidery hoop flower add-on from some Tide Pool cardstock and I'm using some white DMC floss to stitch my petals. And I am just using a typical backstitch to stitch these. I am using all six strands of my DMC floss because I'm making these nice lines and I want them to be big and chunky so that we can see them really well. So what I'm doing is I'm starting on one end of the petal working my way around that petal and then I will come up in the middle and do the little spine in the center. So once I get around to that end there I don't need to worry about connecting them and I will just go right up those three stitches through the middle. Then I will move on to the next petal but you can see there exactly what that creates, I am going to tie this one off now that I'm kind of back towards the bottom of the petal where my tail is. So I'll just tie this in a double knot and I'll trim off the tail later. But I'm going to continue on to the next petal and of course I'm going to speed this up a lot so that you can see some of my stitching. And then through the magic of television, we're going to skip forward a little bit. So I'm doing the same method I did on that first petal and I'm going to continue that for all six all the way around. Now I did run out of thread. I didn't have quite enough to make it all the way around. So I left this in here so you could see how I'm adding another strand. So I was up at the top of that petal. I'm just gonna pull it through and hold it with my finger while I continue my back stitching. And after I have about three or four stitches in to where it's not gonna move, I'll tie those two pieces together and trim off the tails. Now I can just continue on as I was doing before until I have all of those petals stitched. And then to tie this off, I'm going to run my thread underneath something I already have stitched and run it back through itself, tie it in a knot and trim it off. Now to do the center of the flower, and I'm using my diagram as a guide, I'm actually going to lightly sketch in those three lines that go across the center with my pencil. And then there are three lines that go in the other direction to create this little crisscross. It's kind of hard to see because I was really, really light with my pencil, but that is a good way to give yourself a guide that's going to get covered up and hidden by your thread. So I'm stitching those lines that go across the center first. I'm going to do all three in one direction. 
then I'm going to come back and do the other direction. Now, if you're feeling really fancy, you could even kind of thread these underneath a couple of the ones that were stitched the first time and make a cool basket weave look. So now that I have the center filled in with those long stitches that crisscross each other and give that cool hatch pattern, I am going to back stitch around the outside of this circle to create the center of my flower. This will connect my petals to my center as I do this and create a complete flower look. Once I complete that circle with my back stitching, I will just tie this off on the back. Luckily, I still have the tail from where I started, so I can just tie a double knot and secure this thread. Then I'll just trim off each end. And now I have this completed daisy on that Tide Pool cardstock, and I just think it's so cute. Next up, let's create a daisy with some filled in petals like these two examples on the left. And for this example, I'm actually going to use two different colors, which is like the one in the center. And then I will use a third color for the middle of the flower. So when I'm filling in the petals like this example, I want to stitch the fill in part first, which I am going to stitch with the lighter color. So all of those little ribs that come off that center piece, that's what I'm going to stitch first. And then I'm going to go back and outline it with a different color. If you were stitching both of these with the same color, I would still suggest that you do those fill in rib kind of shapes first and then do the outline and the spine of the center. So I'm starting at that bottom hole of the line that goes up the center. Then I am going out to the third hole on the outside so I get this diagonal. Once I get to the top, I'm going to keep going through that top hole and make this kind of wagon wheel shape for these pieces at the top. And there are five of those. And then once I get those five stitched, I can start going back down the holes in the center to those outside holes and create that diagonal kind of herringbone look to this petal. I'm going to go ahead and tie this off because I've worked my way back to the bottom where my tail is. And then I will move on to the next petal and do the same. As I said, I am using two colors for this. But if you were using one color, you could go ahead and stitch the outline and that spine up the middle while you're on this petal. But I'm going to move on to the next petal and do the exact same thing that I did on the first one. So I'm starting at that bottom hole of that line in the center, and then I'm going to go up three holes. Once you have one stitch, you can kind of easily see how to make these symmetrical with the one beside it. So I'm speeding this up a lot so you can see this kind of form and come together. I know that this stitching is a little too fast to see, but I'm going to skip ahead to my last petal here. So I've filled in all six petals with that lighter pink color, and now I can tie off my string, and I'll move on to that darker pink for my outlines. So I'm using just a darker shade of pink. You can see my numbers here. I have 761 as my light and 760 as my dark. And then I'm doing exactly as I did on the first flower. I'm starting at that bottom part and doing a back stitch all the way around. So I'm starting in those holes that are going around the center of the flower and I'm going all the way around. And this is going to finish this off nicely. And this is why I like to do the outline last because I think it gives it a much better finished look. So I've gone around the outside and now I can go up that centerpiece just as I did before on the flower that we stitched on the blue cardstock. I'm going to tie this off so I don't have to hold that tail anymore. And then I will continue on and do the same to all of the petals. So I've skipped ahead again to my last petal and I will finish this one off by going up that little spine in the middle and then I'll tie off this dark pink floss. 
I think this flower with the filled in petals is really cute. It would be fun to stitch these in some different colors. Maybe pick three colors and skip every other one. Maybe pick six colors or two colors. I think any combination would be really cute. So what I did here is I threaded my floss under a couple of the threads till I got back over to where my loose end was so I could tie off the two tails together and then trim them off. Now I can move on to the center. Now for this one, I decided to just outline the center. I'm not going to do the crisscross in the middle. So it's going to look a little different than the examples above. But I am doing the same method that I did on the flower on the blue cardstock at the very end where I just outlined the circle. And you're going to see that this leaves a space in the middle, which would be cute for a little smiley face, or I am going to add a button as an embellishment, which I think is a really fun way to pull in some more kind of sewing type notions to this stitched detail. So once I have that circle complete, I will tie this off and then this flower will be ready to go as well. So here are the two flowers that I stitched and you can see how they are some different looks depending on what you want. So we have the open petals with the filled in center and then the filled in petals with the open center. And here is where I'm going to add a little yellow button for the center of my flower. And I just think that's a fun a little added detail. Now you could add this button with a glue dot, but I wanted it to look like it was sewn on. So I am piercing through the button where the holes of the button are. And then I'm widening those holes a little bit with my piercing tool. I have a piece of that same yellow floss that I have threaded through the back. Then I'm threading it through one of the buttonholes. I'll go back through the other buttonhole and then through one of the holes on my piece of paper. So I've got that in place and then I wasn't holding my button, let me hold that in place. And then I can thread the other one through. And then I can tie it off because this is not a button on a piece of apparel. It doesn't have to function as a normal button. We only really need to go through those holes once and it is held in place. And look how cute that is. I just think that's so cute. Now I've pulled out the dies from the original embroidery hoop die set to cut my frames or my hoops and my little pins. So for this flower that I stitched on the Tide Pool cardstock, I'm adding a hoop that I cut from Narwhal cardstock. So we have that kind of lighter gray. And then for the pin, so it was a little darker, I cut that from Stormcloud cardstock. I also think it's really fun to cut these pins from Sparkle cardstock, like silver or gold. I think that is a really fun look on this embroidery hoop. Now for the other one, I cut the hoop from craft cardstock, so we have that more kind of traditional look of a wooden hoop. And the pin is cut from Narwhal. And I'm just adding this obviously with a little bit of liquid glue right around the outside edge of the circle. A couple little dots on the back of the top and then I picked up the pin. And now my embroidery hoops are ready to be put on some cards. So let's make some cards with these two beautifully stitched flowers. So for my first card, I'm pulling some papers from the Rainbow Ever After collection. I'm using the 12 by 12 for the polka dots, which I've cut with the outside end stitch rectangle. And then I'm actually pulling out some scraps from the six by six paper pad. And I'll be cutting these with the leaf dies from the flower garden backdrop. I think this is a fun way to use up some scraps and create some fun embellishments that match your pattern paper. These will be tucked behind this stitched flower just for a little edit, added decoration. And I also cut a few of the butterflies, but I am actually going to change these out to some ballet slipper cardstock because I felt like the pattern paper just didn't show up quite enough. For the sentiment, I have a piece of that beautiful ombre paper. I have this strip left over and I thought it would be really fun to hot foil the sentiment that says big hugs onto that ombre paper. So I've already got my platform nice and hot and ready. I've already hit that timer button. I am putting my foil with the pretty side towards the plate. Then I will put my pattern paper with the pretty side towards the foil. I like to add this piece of typing paper when I know I might have some overfoiling from a small piece of paper. 
just to keep my plates clean. And then here is that beautiful big hugs that's foiled in some pink foil. I did have some slight over foiling, but I'm actually not too worried about it because I am cutting it out with the coordinating die and that over foiling is going to get cut off anyway. So I can just take the coordinating die, line that up and hold it in place with a little bit of removable tape and run that through my die cut machine and I have this beautiful ombre foiled sentiment which I think is going to look great on this card. Now to assemble my card I will go ahead and put that polka dot paper onto a white card base. I like that we have this white on white little frame around that polka dot paper. I also cut out a scalloped circle to fit behind my embroidery hoop. I think this is a fun added detail and I'll just add some liquid glue to the back of my stitch piece and center that up in this scallop circle. When I add a piece to the back of an embroidery hoop piece like this that has some thickness, I like to lay my hand on it for a minute for that glue to set and it kind of curves that piece down and really makes it stick to the piece in the background. Now that that glue is set, I can start to assemble my card with the little leaves that I cut. I did put some foam squares on the back of the embroidery hoop piece, but it is not stuck down yet. And I did that so I could tuck these leaves behind this piece. So I'll just add those with a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm using that embroidery hoop as a guide so I know what's peeking out from behind. You can also see there that I replaced my butterflies with some ballet slipper cardstock butterflies. Now to add my sentiment, I'll just use some liquid glue all over the back of that. You could also die cut some pieces and stack them up if you wanted this to be a little bit thicker and stand up a little bit more from the background. But I'm going to have just my embroidery hoop pop up off the background. So I have those foam squares on the back. I can pull off the liner paper now and center that up. I'm just moving this on my grid mat so I can look at that grid to make sure it's right in the middle. And then finally, I can add these little butterflies. These are also from the Flower Garden Backdrop die set. And I'm bending them in the middle so that they have some dimension like they've landed on my card. And I'll just add a little bit of glue to that center part where I have the fold. Now I thought it would be fun to fill in the petals with some glitter. So this is a glitter pin. I think this is a Spectrum Noir pin. I also have a Wink of Stella pin. I haven't used these in a while, but this is a really fun look because once that dries, all you're left with is the shimmer. Then of course, I want to add some shimmer to my butterflies and then look at this finished card. You can see that shimmer in those petals and I think this is really fun. I love all the pastels and shimmer on this card. Next up, let's make a card with the other flower that I created. And I'll be using the garden snail die set to complement my flower. I've cut my garden snail frame and background from some narwhal cardstock and I'm just adding some adhesive all over that solid piece. Then I can add the outlines on top. And then for the shell, I cut this from some purple spiffy speckles paper. So I have those cute little speckles in there. For the body of the snail, I'll cut this from some apricot cardstock. And I'll just pop out all those little pieces and drop the body of the snail into the frame. And then finally, for the little face, I'll use some storm cloud cardstock. You can see this is just a little tiny scrap. And I'm going to actually lay this on top and line it up and just push those little eyes and the mouth out right into their spots. And now how cute is that little snail? He's going to go great with my stitched flower. And you're going to see that I'm going to make him into a sewing snail today. For my background, I have some Spiffy Speckles paper in the teal color and the green. And I'm using the sentiment from So Very Mice that says, you are so amazing, which goes perfectly with the sewing theme of this card. Now to create the top of my grass, I'm using the stitched wavy borders. I thought that this border would go great with the sewing theme of this card. So I'm just lining that up and I'll run that through my die cut machine. 
To continue on with the stitching or sewing theme, I knew that the stitch cloud backdrop would be perfect for this background piece. And then to make the grassy area stand out a little bit more, I'm just inking the top of it with some celery stick ink. I think this helps pattern and paper stand out from each other a bit more. Now I can start to assemble by adding my stitch cloud backdrop to a card base. And then I'll add that little green grassy piece right along the bottom as well. Now for the flower and the snail, I am adding some foam squares to the back of this. And for the flower, I just added it around the edge between the stitching. Then I can add my little snail and he'll overlap that a little bit. And then I took out the Sewn With Love stamp set and colored and cut out some of these fun sewing images. And I thought that it would be so cute to kind of layer these supplies on the snail like he's bringing them all over where he did this project. The little thimble on the snail's antennae is so cute. I loved how that turned out. Then of course I have the little tomato here which I can overlap on the other side. I really like how this kind of makes that embroidery hoop look like it's part of this little scene. Then I have this little thread, which I stamped with guava cardstock. And I also have the needle and I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut open the eye of the needle. Then I am using my tweezers to kind of open it up a little bit so that I can slide it onto this stamped piece of thread. So it looks like my snail has kind of wrapped himself up in his needle and thread while he was making his cute embroidery flower project. Now I want to add those little spools on top of his shell like he's bringing all his supplies over. And I'll just use foam squares for all of those as well so that they are popped up just like my snail. I did cut and color four of the little spools but I only ended up using three of them on top of my snail. I just think this little stack of spools is so cute. I also have these little pins and I thought those would be really cute kind of sticking up out of the spools of thread. I did think it would also be cute to add a little speech bubble for the snail. So I'm using the All the Speech Bubble stamp set to stamp the sentiment, I really mean it, and a little speech bubble in some hippo ink. I'm adding that with some foam squares. And then I also added some little guava hearts using the smallest heart from the Hearts and Stars with Skinny Tag die. Finally, I need to add my glitter and my sparkle. So I'm adding some stickles to the little hearts, the tops of the pins, and the thimble. And then here is my finished card. And I just love that sewing snail. He is so, so cute. So here are the two cards that I created today with that new embroidery hoop flower add-on. Now let's create a card using that sending love die. So I've cut a piece of white cardstock to be the right size to cut this sentiment out of and I'm going to do some ink blending on this piece using sunflower, peachy keen, fresh lavender, and merman. And I'm going to start with that sunflower ink on one end and work my way across creating a colorful rainbow piece that I can cut this sentiment out of. And today I am recreating a card that was made by Grace. And thank you so much, Grace, for letting me recreate your card today. This little rainbow that she created on the sentiment is probably not a combination I would normally use, but it turned out just beautiful. I especially love this lavender with that peachy keen color. And then of course I will finish off on the other side with that merman ink. Now this does look a little splotchy right now but as it absorbs into my paper it will kind of even out and when we die cut it you won't be able to see the imperfections as much. So I will send this through my die cut machine and cut out this beautiful sentiment and look at that beautiful rainbow sentiment. I just think that this is so pretty. Now for my background of my card, I am pulling out one of those beautiful ombre papers, this one with the green and purple and pink. And I'm going to do some hot foiling with my cloud background hot foil plate in landscape. And I'm using this beautiful Prisma foil today. 
So I've already put my foil plate on there, hit that timer button so it's all ready to go. I've brought it back to my table so you can see that I'm putting that foil with the pretty side down towards my plate. And then I will put the pretty side of my pattern paper down towards my foil. I'll run this through my die cut machine and when I pull it out, I will peel away that foil and we get this beautiful cloud background on that ombre. It is so pretty. And Prism is one of my favorite foil colors to use. I used the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles to trim this out. And then I'm also using a piece of the larger 12 by 12 pattern paper with that beautiful small rainbow stripe to cut a piece to go behind my cloud background. Grace's card had this cute little rainbow stripe peeking out on each side of this cloud background and that is just so cute. So I'm adding that to my card base and then I will add my foiled clouds right on top. And you can see how that cute little rainbow peeking out just adds some more color and interest. Now I can add my giant sending love and I'm just adding this directly to the background with some liquid glue. Now I'm going to fill in the letters with some white. So I will run this through my die cut machine again with some white cardstock. And then I can add a little bit of liquid glue inside all of these letters and drop in those little pieces that go inside. And this is just going to make this stand out even more. I think that this would also be really pretty cut from some pixie dust sparkle card stock if you wanted some sparkle on your card. And it's really easy to kind of trace inside those letters with your glue tube. You just kind of run it around inside that opening. And then we're finishing off the rest of these letters here at the bottom. And I really do like that this particular die doesn't require you to keep any inside pieces to pop in later. So the inside of the O and the two E's, they're all part of the overall die and you don't have to keep up with any extra pieces. So I've cut a piece of black cardstock with one of the wavy banners and I'm finishing off my sentiment by adding the part that says on a cloudy day from the My Rainbow stamp set. And I'm curving this by sticking it to my die and then I will pick it up with a block. And it's just a slight curve to match this wavy banner. I've already prepped that little banner with some anti-static powder and then I'm stamping this in some clear embossing ink and I will add some white embossing powder. I'll tap off the excess and then I can heat this up with my heat tool and we get that nice bright white sentiment on that black sentiment banner. I will go over this with a damp chamois to kind of wipe off that extra powder so you can see now it's nice and clean. I've already colored and cut out some images from the My Rainbow stamp set as well as that little cloud from the All the Clouds and I'm just adding my images around my sentiment. I've popped up some of those clouds with foam. This little cloud I'm gluing to the background directly so that I can layer my unicorn over it. And then for my little sentiment banner that I just heat embossed, I will add some foam to it as well. I'm using some black foam squares for this since it is black cardstock. I don't get to use those black ones quite as often. And then I also have this little sparkle. Now Grace layered this in a different spot, but I actually had a little spot on my background that looked a little off. And this is a great way to kind of cover up those little mistakes with some really fun embellishments. Finally, I'm adding some glitter to my clouds and my sparkles, and then I decided to kind of add some just to the very bottom of my letters. I love that look of a giant sentiment where the letters look like they've been dipped into some glitter, and I was very light-handed, so it's very subtle. But here is my finished card that was inspired by the card that Grace made. So thank you so much, Grace, for letting me remake your card today. Now let's take a look at some examples from the design team. I love Audrey's card with all those fun clouds and those red letters really pop. That little All My Heart mouse is just so cute. Here is another card by Grace where she made that sentiment kind of blend into the background for a really cool look. 
This card by Maureen is so sweet. I love that she filled in the letters with some glitter card stock to really make it shine. Here is the card I created using that giant sentiment without the letters inside, and you can see those rainbow stripes through the sentiment. And then here is a card by Elise. I love the clean and simple look with that quilted backdrop. This card by Megan is so cute. I love those little manatees and the undersea scene that she created. And then here is a really bright and colorful card by Melissa using that big, bold sentiment. This card by Elena is so sweet. I love those little mice flying around in the paper airplanes with that cloud background. And then here is the card from Grace that inspired the card that I created today. I love this card by Melissa using the embroidery hoop flower. I love that she layered the clovers behind it to give it lots of dimension. And then here is a clean and simple card. Henry's Build a Sentiment stamp set is perfect to pair with this stitch flower. You can also use this flower to create fun gifts like I did on this mini notebook. And then here is another look at the cards that I created in today's video. So we have this really beautiful springy pastel card and then we have this really fun sewing themed card with that cute little garden snail. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye!